What if becoming rich and wealthy was really super easy? And what if you had the map, literally the GPS that took you there without any problems? Wouldn't that be nice just to know the simplest path, the things that you must do in life to become wealthy? I'm gonna deliver that. I'm literally going to give you the GPS to true wealth and abundance. And I'm gonna show you what happiness can really be like by giving you some simple steps that all you need to do is take action on them. My name's Chris Noggle, this is What Now, What's Next. Well, let's dive into this. You know, wealth is a pretty simple thing, but the problem with becoming wealthy is it's the opposite of what you've been taught. And it's the opposite of everything that you're going to be taught as you get older. You see, becoming wealthy is way simpler than what you actually might believe. The solution is astonishingly simple. And the solution is not only simple, but it could be explained in a way that you and your children would be able to understand and use this knowledge when you need it most. And I bet you when you need it most is right now. So let's dive into the very first thing you need to start doing. This is one that I learned at a young age. My mom taught me this actually. My mom taught me this by showing me the way that she did things. See, we didn't grow up with money. So when my mom needed things, she'd have to save up for them. So what my mother would do, and I witnessed this as a young boy, she would come home with her spare change from the grocery store or wherever we went. And she'd always take that change and show me that she'd put it in this, we had this big glass jar and she'd dump all that spare change in the glass jar. And then of, over courses of time, my mom would come to me and she'd say, hey, Chris, Let's count that money. Now to me, this was a fascinating thing because all I saw was a glass jar filled with these, these silver and sometimes copper looking coins. And I'm like, what does that mean? So she'd dump it all out on her, on her bedroom floor and we'd sit there and we'd roll this. So she taught me how to roll change. Now, if you're less than 38 years old, you've probably never done this in your life, but it's actually pretty exciting to do this. And when she saved up enough money, we'd have all these rolled coins here. When she had enough, she would go buy the things that she needed. And for me, that was fascinating. I loved watching this money build over time. And then when we counted, it actually became real. And when I saw her buy things, most memorably, it was a Craftsman lawnmower. Now I know for you, most of you are like, whoa, that's not a big thing. But to us, that was epic. The lawnmower that we used to mow our two acres barely made it every single time we had to cut it. So this new mower was the same as you buying a Ferrari to us. And I remember my mom brought home this little black box right here and I'd carve things into it. You can see I got all sorts of little carvings in it. This is old, but I was just a child and she bought me this and she said, every time you make money, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna put that money in this box. So what I would do is I'd go out and shovel neighbors' driveways. I would mow their lawn. I'd go across the street and I would clean the horse stalls or the pig stalls for my neighbor. And over time, that money would build up. I kept just opening and closing this, opening and closing it. I never counted it. My mom actually kept this. And then one day my mom, took me out to this place called Hebler's and, and it was a dirt bike shop that I always loved going there, but I very rarely got to go. She took me there and we were looking at this dirt bike. I had been fascinated and just fantasizing about this dirt bike so much that I'd, I'd drawn, I can't even count the number of photos of that dirt bike, me jumping that dirt bike and all sorts of stuff. And I remember after I rode that KX125, I also rode a RM125, Mr. Joe Hebler let me ride both. And I remember thinking, wow, what a day this was. And I'm waiting for mom to say, you know, okay, you're ready to go home. And then she says to me, she says, do you wanna buy it? I didn't think I had saved enough money. And then what she proceeded to tell me is that I did save up enough money in that little black box that we could actually buy that dirt bike and take it home with us. So that was my first experience with money. Now, how does that parlay back to paying yourself first? Well, it's simple. In doing that, my mother, with this little black box or her little, her little jar taught me to pay myself first. When I made money, the first thing I was taught was not to go spend it, not to give it away, not to do anything with it, was to save it. But I hate the word savings. I like to use keep it because our lives, we're not taught to keep money. We're not taught to pay ourselves first. First, what are you taught to do? Well, think about it. You're taught to go trade hours for dollars. You're taught to work for money. You're taught to get that money. And the first thing you're taught to do is pay your bills first, pay your creditors first, pay your debtors first. You are not taught 
to pay yourself first. So this is one of the most important things you must master because if you don't get this first step down, nothing else I'm going to tell you in this video is going to matter. So I'll just pause and while you're at like this first lesson of paying yourself first, why don't you click the little subscribe button while you're at it? Because we got some time because I'm sure you don't get this. And then also that little alerts, it's a little bell up top, smash that thing so that you're alerted every time I put a new video up. Okay, so now you understand the first step, which is pay yourself first. Now we're gonna get into some fun stuff. So most of you are taught to go out and work a nine to five. That's what you do. You're, you're working a job, you're working for somebody else, and in doing so, you're making a paycheck. Then you take that paycheck, you put it in the bank, and yes, we already went over this. You pay somebody else's bills, okay? But why don't we change the way we think about this? Because until you break that focus of trading hours for dollars, nothing else is gonna matter after this second step. Because if all you do is pay everybody else and work you know, trading hours, nothing's gonna change. You're gonna always be on the financial hamster wheel. So let's try something. Instead of you working a nine to five, why don't we try changing one thing? Remember the little block, black box, I'm gonna leave this right here. This was you paying yourself first. That money that you pay yourself first, I don't care if, where you keep it, I'm just showing this as a mental. What I want you to do is I want you to think about this money making more money for you every single day of your life. I want you to start learning to make your money work for you. Now, first you gotta save it. Notice how I said, you can't go any further until you learn how to pay yourself first and keep more of your money. But once you keep it, you can't just leave it in the box, okay? That's what I did, but I've, I've since evolved. That money has to go to work for you. Because until you learn how to stop trading hours for dollars, you haven't mastered the one thing that you need to understand. What is the most valuable resource that you all have? It's time. It is the most valuable asset we all have. And until you start changing the way you use your time, that's it. Because you know what? If you just trade your hours for dollars, you're only gonna be able to build up so much wealth and it's not gonna be enough. Because there's only 24 hours in the day. You know this. So if there's only 24 hours every single day, once you back out sleep and family time and all that, how many hours are there left for you to trade? The answer is not enough. Which is why this step is so vital because until you learn how to make your money work for you and how to make your money make money for you, you're always gonna be on that trajectory of trading hours for dollars, the most precious resource of all. So let's move on to what I would call the third step. And this one's actually pretty easy. And I'm gonna sum this one up with a, a story. This is a famous story. It was about the late summer of 1929. You see, in the late summer of 1929, the story says that there was a shoe shine boy who was shining Joe Kennedy's shoes. And, and he was giving Joe Kennedy stock advice while he was cleaning his shoes. He's whistling. He's like, oh, you should buy this stock, that stock. This one's going to go to the moon, Sh you know, shining the shoes. Joe Kennedy is a wise old investor. And he sat back in that chair while the shoe shine boy is blah, 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 blah about stocks. And he thought to himself, if the shoe shine boy is giving me stock tips, well, damn, it's time to get out of the market. And the story goes on to say that Joe Kennedy sold all of his stocks and he made a killing doing it. Because if you don't know, 1930, the Great Depression was in full swing. So because he sold everything, he was out of the market. And whether or not that story is true or not remains to be seen. But the lesson's really important, isn't it? The lesson is get to know what you invest in really, really well. And do not take advice on your money from others unless they have the financial wisdom to back it up. The shoe shine boys didn't have the financial wisdom. The shoe shine boys didn't know, like, and understand what they were giving advice on. My question to you is, what are you investing your money in? Do you know, like, and understand it? Are you getting your advice from somebody that truly understands what they're telling you because of wisdom? And wisdom, just so you know, involves failure. So if they've never failed, if they've said, oh, I've always done well, I've always done well for my clients, then don't go with their advice. This is a really important one because most people today violate this one. Because most people today are rushing around and, and you're making emotional-based decisions. You're not making decisions based on sound logic. Get to know what you're investing in really, really well. And never take advice 
from people on your money unless they have the financial wisdom to give you that advice. Let's move on to the next one. This one is one that I really suffered with when I was growing up. And this one requires you to take the rose colored glasses off because we're all chasing these big returns. We all wanna make the most amount of money the fastest way possible. That's why the lottery exists. That's why so many people rush to buy lottery tickets and instant lottos and all these things because everybody's looking for the easy way, the quick way. Gotta make money right now. Stop. If you are chasing fast returns, you are being greedy. And if you are greedy with your money, your money will be yours no more. You see, here's the lesson. You need to be realistic. You need to be realistic about what you invest in. So an easy way to be realistic about what you invest in is really sit back and think about whatever investment you're gonna do and say, is this really going to give me this kind of a return? In today's world, I will tell you where I see this the most. I see advisors and not even financial advisors, non-licensed advisors <clears throat> selling a product called an IUL, an index universal life. And they're selling it based on a hypothetical return. Let's just say six to 7%. Now, some of you are like, well, that's not hypothetical. That's not an unrealistic return. It is right now because we're in a recession and we will continue to go down and down in the market. So if you're in a vehicle that was sold to you based on a hypothetical return that even by today's standards doesn't happen and won't happen, you are being greedy. And because you're being greedy, your money will flee you. You have to be realistic and not greedy. Wealth is a marathon, folks. It's not a sprint. The faster you try to get yourself to that end destination of wealth, which they call the arrival syndrome anyway, is the faster you're going to lose all your money. Wealth will take time, just like life. Life's a marathon. Stop and smell the roses. Enjoy it. Let's move on to the next one. You have to learn to be generous. You have to learn to give generously without any conditions. Too many people give because they want to get something back. You know, you're, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to give, but I'm going to get something back. You violate the law. You violate that lesson. The second your thought comes in saying, oh, if I give, what am I going to get? You can't do that. Zig Ziglar said it best. He said, if you help enough people get what they want, you will get everything you want. One of the most important lessons you can ever follow is this one. There isn't a business in the world that's successful that doesn't solve somebody else's problem. Their sole focus of every business that you can think of solves somebody else's problem. Let me pose one simple question to you. When you go out to your mailbox and you look through your mail and you see one of those pieces of mail and you know what it is, where they're asking for a donation. I don't care if it's St. Jude or a cancer society, their Ronald McDonald House or SPCA, you, you know them all. There's a million of them. What do you do with them? Some of you open it up because you think there's something in there. There's a nickel. Sometimes there's the return envelope stickers, right? You know, you got your name and your address on there. You take those out, you save those, and you throw the rest out. You realize what you just violated? You just violated what I just told you a second ago. Every time you get one of those, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take all the stuff out. I want you to put everything aside except for the coupon that asks you to make a donation. Then what I want you to do, and hopefully you all have a checkbook, I want you to grab your checkbook and I want you to physically write a check. Whatever's in your heart at that very moment, I don't care if it's a dollar, write a dollar. Maybe it's $5 one day. Maybe you're feeling really generous one day and you put 10 bucks on there. You write the check out, yeah, on the bottom, you just put donation or put I want to give or anything. Whatever's in your heart, you put it on there. You seal it up, put it on there, put a stamp on it. Most of them come pre-stamped and you mail it in. But then what's going to happen is you're going to get more of them because you go on a list. And now everybody and their brother knows that you gave a dollar to St. Jude. So now everybody wants your dollar. Don't think of it that way. Think of it, I want to help more people. So please send them my way. So you don't feel good when you write checks, do you? When you pay your car insurance, when you pay your gas card, when you pay that credit card, does that feel good? No, but when you give, it feels good to write those checks. Let's move on to the final lesson here. The final lesson is that everything you do in your life, it puts you one step closer to your legacy. Every one of those dollar checks that you write, every time you make somebody laugh, every time you do something good for somebody else, you are creating your legacy. 
Don't for one second think that your legacy is made up of that car in the garage or this house that I gotta leave on to my family. That is material things and there's no place in a legacy for material things. People don't care about material things. They might act like they do, and although it'll feel good when they get it, they care about the message and the legacy that you left behind on how you treated people. That's what will live beyond the car and the house. All they're gonna do is sell the car. All they're gonna do is sell the house. But what you taught them, the lessons you left, will create your ultimate legacy. What are you gonna leave behind? What lessons can you pass on from your failures and your hardships so far? If you like this video, make sure you click on that one because you'll love that video telling you all about the six laws of wealth. See you next time.